You know, I really have been waiting for ages to make that joke. Sega. It exists. Today, we will be exploring the history of Sega as a hardware manufacturer, and explaining the downfall. Early beginnings. Sega has modest roots, its original name being Standard Games in the 1940s and then Surface Games of Japan in the 1950s. It started out as an Im importer for coin-operated devices such as slot machines and jukeboxes. Rising the ranks. Following the acquisition of Ruzen Enterprises, Sega officially became Sega and started making arcade cabinets. Sega had a mainstream success with one of their arcade cabinets, Periscope. This made the one quarter per play go mainstream. Many would argue that Periscope was a major turning point for the arcade cabinet business. Periscope is what gave Sega their good reputation with arcade machines. Sega continued to deliver on people's expectations for another 20 years. Finding Nemo. Competition. By the time of the 80s, the arcade machine business was starting to die as home consoles took over the video game scene. Sega released the Sega Master System in North America in 1986. The Sega Master System was just a version of their latest arcade board modified to fit different cartridges and designed to fit into a home console size. This console had decent reception all around, but was held back by its lack of game selection and by Nintendo. Yes, Sega found some competition. Nintendo! Another thing holding it back was the lack of, memorable, of a memorable video game character. I didn't have any exposure to the Master System. The Nintendo Entertainment System had Mario, not a for Sega. The Nintendo Entertainment System, released a year earlier, was making the Master System look silly. After all, if you look at both consoles side by side, which would you choose? The sleek one with a nice addition of what somewhat matched most TV sets of the time period, or a wonky black box that looks like a Sony Walkman. The resemblance is uncanny. And the foreshadowing. Competing against the competition. Sega! Sega started development on their next home console almost immediately after they'd finished the Master System. During the long three years of development, NEC released their TurboGrafx-16. This urged Sega to make sure their new console had a 16-bit microprocessor inside. This new console was codenamed Sega Console 16. Very creative, Sega. In 1989 and 1990, Sega released their new console to the world. It was known as the Genesis in North America and the Mega Drive everywhere else. This is when the famous question arose, which one is better? The Super Nintendo Entertainment System slash Super Spamicom or the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive? There were some games that were available only for the Genesis, um, but with the Nintendo, you, you still had access to Mario World and stuff like that. And I really felt like that was the trump card. Um, eventually, games like, uh, I want to say, Mortal Kombat came to Nintendo, and Killer Instinct was proprietary to, to Nintendo, but it just wasn't as good as Mortal Kombat. So when Mortal Kombat came over, that was a big deal. Um, it kind of evened the playing field and then gave Nintendo the edge, because Mario was my own. The Sega Genesis was better. My only reasoning is, from a technical standpoint, I believe that the Super Nintendo was better. But from a game standpoint, I believe that the Sega Genesis was better. There aren't that many. There aren't like any games on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System that really excited me. But Sonic the Hedgehog was is one of my favorite games for the Sega Genesis. In terms of specs. The Super Nintendo beat this Genesis in almost every way, except for one. That one spec is the GPU clock speed. It blew Super Nintendo out of the water. You know what that means. A new BS advertising campaign. Genesis does! 16-bit arcade graphics. You can't do this on Nintendo! Genesis does! 16-bit sports action. You can't do this on Nintendo! Genesis does! Genesis does! Sega claimed that the Genesis had something called Blast Processing, but they didn't care to explain. Well, 
That's not exactly true. Watch. So what's blast processing do? Well, yeah, of course it's super fast. You're on the back of a drag st And, uh, what if you don't have oh, blast processing? They're really doing my boy Super Mario Kart like that. No, 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 we're not gonna just pass that up. Welco Mitiot Hinex to level. Good job, Sega. Well, that was a little bit cocky. Sega! <laughs> you can find a bunch of 40 year olds arguing on Reddit about it nowadays. There's no question about it. The Genesis was when Sega got their iconic Blue Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog was a huge success all around the world. Sonic is still an important video game icon to this day. I don't remember ever not knowing about Sonic the Hedgehog. In from Sony. Sega was confident. Their success was amazing. And in their heads, there was nowhere to go but up. In 1994, Sega released their next generation console to Japan. The Sega, the Sega Saturn. Saturn. Sales were doing pretty well. But then Sega got too cocky with their success. At E3 1995, the very first E3 night, Sega stated the price of the Saturn at 399 and proceeded to say it was out of the one can understand why Sega did this. Sony's PlayStation was supposed to be out of this world. Sega wanted to try to overstat overshadow the PlayStation release by getting there first. However, stores around North America were frustrated as they were giving no notice that the console would be releasing several months early. The Sega Saturn was dead before it was born. At E3 1995, Sega gave their huge presentation on their brand new 3D game console, setting a price of $3.99 and saying it was available now. now! We started our rollout of Sega Saturn yesterday. We were at retail today with 1,800 Toys R Us, software, etc., and electronic boutique stores around the U.S. and Canada. I can't even imagine how confused these shops were when a truck just pulled up and they're like, hey, we got some Sega Saturns for you. Like, dude, you gotta give them warning. $399, Sega Saturn is not only here now, it's out there. President of Sony Computer Entertainment of America, Steve Ray, simply walked up to the podium and said, $299. $299? <laughs> and sat back down. This finished the Sega Saturn. Much like the Master System before, Sega was determined. Their final attempt. On November 27th of 1998, Sega released their dream. Their CD-ROM based game console. It showed a lot of potential. Sega didn't goof up like they did with their Look at the fuss. Saturn. 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 It was released on 9999 in North America. Coincidence? I think not! Dreamcast had a few killer apps like Sonic Adventure, Sega GT, Crazy Taxi, Jet Set Radio, Fantasy Star Online. Yes, it was an online game. This was the first of the sixth generation of consoles, and the first home console to support online play with a built-in modular modem. Unfortunately for Sega, the PlayStation was past due for an upgrade. The widely known, still best-selling video game console of all time, PlayStation 2, was about to release in the new millennium. Instantly making the Dreamcast look like a child's play thing. The PlayStation 2 committed a murder. This is most disturbing. Accepting defeat. With its flashy new built-in DVD player, the PlayStation 2 killed the Dreamcast. Over the course of my life, I bought three Sony PlayStation 2s. The lasers kept going out. Um, I absolutely love it. I love this, the original PlayStation, so I bought the PlayStation 2 instead of going with anything else. Um, but because I ended up having to buy three of them, and even the third one, the third one broke, um, the PlayStation 3 was coming out, and I decided no more Sony. Sega could not recover and decided to throw in the towel. Sega admitted defeat and went on to be strictly software only in 2001. I kind of felt bad because I felt like they were making a good system, but they just didn't have the money to compete with the games. Um, and then Sony coming out, 
just really kind of wrecked them because Sony just had so many more games, and that's what really messed up Dreamcast. Some of the crew who developed the Dreamcast went on to help develop Microsoft's upcoming Xbox, which also failed to beat Sony, and even Xbox 360, which was kind of malfunctioning. Sega's hardware legacy went on to be many compilations of Sonic games. A lot of the Dreamcast's killer apps were ported over to the Xbox and GameCube. Eventually, Sega games started to be released for the PlayStation. Many would argue that Xbox consoles are the ghost of Sega's legacy. And I agree. Games like Sega GT and Jet Set Radio can be found on the original Xbox. The original Xbox's chunky controller somewhat resembles the Dreamcast gadget built controller. I would agree with that. The, the original Xbox when it came out just seemed to be a better quality for better quality console. Um, from the cable, even the cables on the controllers were thicker and longer and um, everything just seemed to be sturdier and better. You heard the man, Sega. All you needed to do was make your console sturdier. Ugh, idiots.